with a, a Christian aim. You have the floor. I know you're a little bit tired now, but 10 minutes you have to be aware. I need your intelligence and your, your big heart because the subject is very important. I want to show this next to prayer, next to prayer, art is a way to build up peace. This is my target, one big target for my few minutes I try to do it. Maybe you know, you know, know Kuhn Nicolaus of Cusanus. He was a writer, a famous writer, theologian who lived in the 15th century. This man created a figure which is discussed up to now in the context of creativity and art. And this figure is an artist is sitting at the riverside and is carving a spoon. He makes a beautiful spoon. He, with much joy, he's happy. He's filled with joy. And suddenly he starts thinking. There are four, three big questions which are relevant for the whole history of art. Is there a spoon? I am carving it in nature. No, he realizes. The, the creator, when he created the world, he simply forgot this spoon. But that's not, not a problem. Because artists have to complement God's creation. And then again, he has a question. Does such a spoon exist in the world again? No, he says to himself because this is the principle of originality, because every piece of work is original and differs from all others. I'm an individual and different from my neighbor. And the third question is, and that's the most important, why do I carve a spoon anyway? Do I need a spoon? No, no, I don't need it. May, can I sell it? No. But what can I do with this spoon? I sp carve this spoon because, because I carve a spoon. This means what I do has its well value in itself. And this is the highest value for everything that is called art. What people do with art is something else. But I do this spoon because I do it, and it has its value in itself. For 450 years, many artists have sat at riversides and make art. And when you take all this together, they have different objectives, they have different media, they have different techniques and talents. When you all take all this together, then you find a big mountain of art higher than the Mount Everest and a high work of creativity of thousands of people. Then you have a big, big mountain of art. And that is the point I would like to talk about. What does this created art have to do with peace? I have three simple ideas because I'm a simple worker and I would like to give these three ideas to you. First, life is not easy. You know that. There are conflicts, fear, pain, grief, stress. There are so many things that burden on us and I want to shorten this list. But there's something else. Since these plagues exist, 
there is a remedy to solve them. This um, uh, remedy is expression, expression, whether it is music, literature, dancing, drama, painting, movies, sculpturing, take what you like in all these art pieces of art works a cathartic force, a healing force. And without this healing force, we would not do well. We would do really bad because we need it. Because we don't only need it for pieces of art, little ones and big ones, but this work purifies the human soul every day. And further, dear people, this force makes our life valuable and worth living. And I think of Simon de Leroux with their handicapped friends. What a beautiful thing that handicapped people are enabled through productive, creative being to make their life more easier and more beautiful. And that is not only for handicapped people, for all people who are at the fringes of society. It's a very wonderful medium uh, which we don't live without. Art can heal. This is my first point, and I'm in the middle of it. Art is able to heal. I would like to add something else, which is very important for me. More and more schools in Europe do not uh, teach um, artistic subjects, but they take uh, economically useful subjects. And now the, the children are no longer enabled and introduced to possibilities of artistic expression. If the children are not introduced to art, they are missing out on something. In the past few weeks, I read in Dostoevsky, in his famous book, The House of the Dead, The House of the Dead, he talked about people of prisoners who lived many years and who were tortured in a Siberian gulag. And they also tortured each other. It, uh, you really, uh, you're really freezing when you read it because he describes it so terribly. But there was a bright spot in, during the year in this gulag. At Christmas, the prisoners were allowed to perform a piece of drama. And Dostoevsky said, it was like a miracle. It was like a miracle because art changes people. Even young uh, aggressive figures became better human beings. They became better human beings through art. And the poet was animated by this experience all his life. Art can heal. Antwerp has, man, has brought forward many great artists, and one was a diplomat of peace, a painter. His name was Peter Paul Rubens. He wrote many letters, and in one of his letters, he wrote about militant confrontation at this time. Dear friends, I can only bear this world when I color it. I like this sentence very much. I can only bear this world when I color it. When I take away art from the world, then we are lost and everything is gray and terrible. My first thought, my first point is art can heal. The second is dialogue. Through my parents, I learned 
in the region where I work in East Belgium, there was a painter who had the idea to gather artists from all former enemy neighboring countries and ask them to work together. And it worked out. They did it in secret, secretly, because it was the end of the Second World War. They w crossed the borders secretly and they worked together and presented their pieces of art. When the painters sh show their symbols uh, on, in their paintings and they tried to show the terrible, cruel war events, the symbols enabled a new communication. They could talk again through the pictures and paintings. That's what art can do. And from this meeting, this being together, friendship was created. Friendships were built, and I would like to get to back to that. This idea it gives still this association, the European Association of Artists from the Eiffel and Ardennes, they still work today and work for peace. And all who live nearby, what is important that from this idea, we had uh, those um, that many uh, cities in Europe got to uh, learn each other and they become became twin towns. Kunst, art is able to create a dialogue, a site of language. And how often does language lie? How often do we say something very quickly and there's nothing behind it? But what art wants to transfer there is is much more behind it. That's the second point. The third point is I have to drink something. <laughs> the third point is maybe you know this quote. A writer uh, watches kids who play soldiers. They play soldiers. He goes there and to them and says, don't you want to play peace instead of war, instead of war? The, ki the kids met and they said, and one came to him and said, Sir, we would like to play peace, but we do not know how to play peace. Dear friends, this is an impressive story. How do we play peace? How does peace work? As I understand art, I think I believe that art uh, art can uh, show you how to play peace, to discover step by step how to play peace. That's why I'm here, to show that I said two points. Art is able to heal. Art is able to start dialogues. And thirdly, and that's the most important part, art is able to make our daily life, our gray reality, and we call it reality sometimes, it can open our world towards heaven. This is a very decisive point, towards heaven. Moneta Lux said to talk to the about about Paul Klee. Kunst art is to make the invisible visible. I would like to say it in a philosophic way, as shortly as possible. Art can connect immanence and transcendence. Art creates something more than our world, goes beyond our world. Without this beyond our world, our world is really sad. My favorite saying is, everything has its heaven. 
I, that's, I invented it myself. Everything has its heaven. Uh, when you want to have a poet who said it in a different way, Josef von Eichendorff said, the Germans know him from school, he said this famous sentence, sleeps a song and things abounding, sleeps a song and things abounding, and all things, a song sleeps in all things, and in his art, to awaken the sleeping song and to make it sound. And this is a wonderful task. For years, I, I admire the work of the community of Sant'Egidio, and I can see this double principle, immanence and transcendence, in a very small example. When someone needs my help, then he gets my help. He gets my help professionally, and that this is a real deed and action. That I help you to cure your wounds and give you to eat. But it's, this is no one, only one aspect. The other aspect which I give to you and which makes my action complete is I give you my friendship. And when you look to antiquities of the antiquity, they said there is no higher form of relation among human beings than friendship. It's the highest we can reach. And when I do this and add this, then I have a realistic realism and transcendence and seem together. We call it also a spirituality. It is there's a second great part of our being which we cannot do without. Dear friends, I'm serious about this. Art, next, besides prayer, is a way to find peace, to create peace. To know how to play peace, to live peace. And I know a long list what belongs to peace. I know one thing. I'm doubting that politics, and I give you no names or I will insult somebody, these mighty people, they are not able to bring about peace because they are not able to carve spoons. And, and then I would like to add something, in my personal opinion, I would like to... I am, maybe I'm all alone, I'm responsible for world peace every day, I am personally, and I am sit, now sit down, pray, and carve a spoon, and I hope that what I do helps world peace every day, because it has a value in it itself, and what I wanted to add there are some seats available next to me for you. Please join me. Danke. Thank you.